Welcome to video three of Blood Vessels for 2402 lecture. This slide might have gone on the last one, but I felt like it was getting a little long. All right, so uh, this is about a structure called an, called anastomosis. Singular is an anastomosis. So the ES is your pretty classic uh, plural ending. So anastomoses are uh, circulation patterns that allow alternate paths of blood flow. We've already seen this one, right? So this is clearly an anastomosis. This is what's called an arteriovenous anastomosis because it goes from an artery to a vein. And you can go any number of these different ways. So just multiple routes through the same or to the same goal. Now arterial anastomoses involve only arteries. And this is the your brain from the uh, inferior view. So you're looking at the bottom of your brain. And you've got several large blood vessels that come in here and in lab you'll have to learn some of these that come in and supply this structure right here which is called the circle of Willis which is kind of like a traffic circle if you want to imagine that you know blood can come in from a lot of different ways and then it'll go out to the brain through a lot of different ways this prevents a blockage in one vessel let's say you block this little vessel right here uh, from uh, let's say a clot gets stuck in there you still have blood coming in from a lot of different ways the same thing works over here with venous anastomoses. If you look, this is the palm of your hand, so it's deep inside the palm. You don't see this from the outside, but if you flip your hand over and look at the back of it, you can see kind of a similar pattern of veins, and you'll see veins coming back from your fingers like this. So it kind of allows uh, blood to go either way, back to back towards the heart. Now this next slide gets a little bit mathy and texty, but I've got a way to explain it in the next slide. So. Uh, this is the physiology of circulation. Now we, we're, consider, we're considering blood flow, blood pressure, and resistance here. And you can see all three of those have abbreviations which I'll be using, right? Blood flow I'll probably usually use F. Uh, blood pressure I'll usually use P, but sometimes you'll see BP. And then resistance I'll almost always go big R. So try to keep it F, P, R. Uh, blood flow is how much blood goes through a given space or a given structure. So it could be through your one vessel. It could be through your brachial artery, or it could be blood flow around and through your stomach, <clears throat> or your whole system, and it's measured in milliliters per minute. If you're talking about the entire system, so blood flow through my body in a minute, we're talking about cardiac output. So in this case, F equals CO. Blood pressure uh, is the, how much hydrostatic force is exerted on the walls of the vessel, and the units here are millimeters of mercury, which is kind of an archaic measurement system, but it's that's the that's the pressure uh, units. Resistance is how hard it is to push the fluid through the tube, and this is due to friction. Uh, liquids molecules bump against each other and scrape against the walls, just like solids do. So you can get friction out of them. The thicker the fluid is, the more viscous it is. You may have heard of viscosity in an oil commercial. So viscosity is how resistant to flow it is. Uh, maple syrup is more viscous than air. You may say, well, why do you use air? Air is a fluid. It's not a liquid. It's a fluid. And it's very, it's very non-viscous, whereas uh, syrup or uh, blood is more viscous. If your blood has some <clears throat> disorders, your viscosity can change, but generally it's pretty similar. Now, what else affects resistance? Well, the thickness of the fluid, the viscosity, how long the vessel is, longer makes it more resistant, right? And also the, di the diameter of the vessel. Now, a bigger diameter and a shorter vessel has less resistance than a small diameter long vessel. Picture a, a long thin straw and a short fat straw. Which one, your book uses this example, which one do you want to drink a milkshake through? The really long thin one or the shorter thicker one, like a boba straw. They're big and thick and kind of solid because boba obviously have a lot of resistance. So here's a nice little formula to help <clears throat> to, that describes how resistance works. So big R is resistance and little r is radius. Now this may look confusing, but it's not. So resistance is one over the fourth power of the radius. So let's just say that, I'll go to the next page here and do some drawing, I hope. Let's see if this works. 
So uh, big R equals one over little r to the fourth. So little r being the radius. If let's say little r equals one, well then big R equals one over one to the fourth. What's one to the fourth? One times one times one times one, right? It's one. So in this case, resistance equals just, a, we're gonna assign that unit, that value to it. Resistance is one, that doesn't mean much to you. But let's, instead of having a radius of one, let's make the radius uh, two. So now the radius is twice as big. Well, big R then equals one over two to the fourth. What's two to the fourth? Well, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So one over 16. So big R equals one sixteenth. So all you do is if you, basically what happens is if you double the radius, you reduce the resistance by an order of, uh, by 16 times, you divide it by 16. So you can see how the other direction would work as well. I'm not gonna put 0.5 squared, but 0.5, well, 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. 0.25 times 0.5 is 0.0125, 1 0.125. It's anyway, <laughs> as radius gets smaller, resistance gets bigger. As radius gets bigger, resistance gets smaller. And I'm going to not draw anymore. All right, so here we are. Uh, where's my cursor? Okay, there it is. So basically you wanna remember this formula and uh, I'm not gonna have you do any complicated math with it. Just under, remember the formula. Uh, big R resistance is one over the radius to the fourth power. And that the key here is that as radius gets bigger, resistance gets smaller. As radius gets smaller, resistance gets bigger. Uh, the overall relationship is this, uh, and I'm just going to add to this. So here's that big R, right? So big R is that resistance. Blood flow, so how much flow goes through a vessel, is equal to the change in pressure over R. So what this tells us is that if the change in pressure gets bigger from one end of the tube to the next, to the end, so from upstream to downstream, if there's a dramatic change in pressure, flow is going to increase. Conversely, if resistance gets greater, that's a bigger denominator than, than excuse me, this, uh, this number is going to get a lot smaller. So if radius, I'm sorry, if resistance gets greater, flow goes down. If change in pressure gets greater, flow goes up. All right. Uh, the main thing, another main thing to remember here is that this resistance is the biggest factor. Uh, your peripheral resistance out there in your art arterioles and arteries can really go up if you vasoconstrict. So if you tighten up those blood vessels, that resistance number is going to shoot way up. Blood pressure, uh, sorry, blood flow is going to go way down.